<laughs> Kenneth, happy birthday. And Jamie's turning around and going back. Ben, she don't need her now. She's going to turn around and go on back. That's good. All at once, this thing just came on. I didn't touch it. Well, that'll work. We just have to start getting on earlier, so to do that every time. Happy birthday, Kenneth. Uh, Thank you. If you uh, if you want to buy us lunch, we'll all meet you over at the Cracker Barrel. And we'll celebrate uh, your birthday. Well, I don't think I had any coupons. Oh well, <laughs> never hurts to ask. <laughs> How do you virtually pat somebody on the back? And that WCO, you supposed to pat them on the back? You yeah. See? I guess that could be another uh, little gizmo they could put on your phone to pat on the back so you could send it to somebody. Hi, right, Squires. We're uh, live. That WCO, you supposed to pat them on the back? And it is nine o'clock. Okay, we'll get this uh, transportation committee under out uh, in accordance to KRS sixty one point eight two three, KR sixty one eight two six executive order twenty twenty dash two forty three, OAG twenty o five twenty twenty Senate Bill one fifty. And the March 31st, 2020 Attorney General Advisory. The Transportation Committee of uh, Byron County Physical Court will meet at 9 a.m. on Tuesday, uh, January the 12th, to consider the following agenda. The meeting will take place video tele uh, teleconference due to the current public health situation. Members of the public will not be allowed to attend the meeting will be broadcast and shown live on Byron County, Kentucky, Facebook. First item we've got coming up is agreement with the Kentucky Transportation Cabinet on the Bristletown Road project. And uh, Scott, you want to get us up to date on that or, or Michael? Well, as far as uh, we're, we've got the tile down here, and uh, we're ready to go on that. Gonna have to get off to Joey Bartley to set a date up for him, but I think we're just waiting on the, the paperwork to get finalized so we can go ahead and get it done. In this agreement, Billy, uh, <clears throat> we'll, well, we're asking for the state to pay 80% of it um, yeah. as an emergency. Uh, it, it, it would qualify for emergency. so. Uh, we'll be passing the resolution should or the agreement should be there um, in your court docket when Sherry sends that out. So we just need to approve that and get it back into them as quick as we can. All right. Um, we don't have to make a motion on that or anything. Can we go yeah. ahead and make a motion? Well, just it's just a it's just a recommendation from your committee to support okay. it. Okay. Know. Next item we got is the Feed Creek Project Report. Uh, went down there last week. <clears throat> they put they they were uh, had it dug out in a slab poured. Uh, their boss pulled them off to go work on a bridge. They will be back in a, an estimated one week to finish that up. Okay. Tracy, go ahead and put those pictures up of what we have of Defeated Creek so far. The way they'll know. This is what Scott's talking about. So obviously here's where they uh, have dug it out. And as Scott said, they're um, putting a bottom in this so they can lay their tiles on. <clears throat> Go ahead, Tracy, just run through your pictures there.
What's that doing? Just keep washing out, good. Well, it gives it a it gives it a solid bottom for those for those tiles to set okay. on. Yeah, okay. That's how many tiles are going in there? Uh, I think you're looking at them. Two. Four, four. Is it two, Scott, or four? There's four 30 inch tiles going in there. Okay. Good gracious, that ought to take care of some water. That is a that is a area that floods a lot um, during heavy rains. It's hard to keep the stuff together down there. How many tiles are going in Bristol Town? Just one. Yes, it's just one. It's I think it's a sixty inch. Mm -hmm. 72 inch by 60 feet. Mm. I believe. Those are costly, very costly. <clears throat> so I, we didn't get the 80 20 on Defeated Creek, did we? Or we did on both of them. Oh, well, we can, uh, I think we, what we'll be using there is, uh, is um, considered our bridge money. Oh. We receive a certain amount of that each year. So, okay. Uh, the next item is uh, figures from the state operating money. Yes, this is something that uh, Tim you had asked for. Um, we receive two payments a year. Um, I think Susan recalls uh, August and February. Now they've sort of doubled up on us this time and sent them very quickly. Uh, when the new administration came in, I think they'd done some type of audit. Um, and they asked us to turn over some, some uh, documents from 2015. So it took us a while to go back through our records to find what they were looking for. Um, I don't know if they misplaced it or what, but it was on some 80-20 uh, projects that were completed in 2015 and maybe 16. But... Um, Jenny, Jenny will be able to tell you exactly what, what we get. I think you had a formula uh, at the last committee meeting uh, and asking about, you know, figures that we get from the state and how that's, how that is figured that is based on the uh, miles of road that we have in our county. All right. Uh, the next item is the road department promotions. Michael, you want to go on uh, tell us about that? Yes. Uh, currently, uh, as I, have, I think I've stated, Scott Taylor um, has uh, moved into the operations manager. We have not had an operations manager. Um, I know since I've, I've been the judge. So uh, it's worked out really well, um, you know, because what we have done is <clears throat> we've, we've sort of, we've made a couple of different crews that, well, actually there's about three crews. And um, there's, there's a lot of things, a lot of moving parts with the road department, uh, which, which actually we need to start uh, uh, actually identifying as our transportation department um, and just, just changing the whole complex of it. And, you know, I have tasked Scott in, in going into the new budget. Uh, he will be participating in that as well because – he needs to know when he's out here figuring these um, these jobs of how much money he has to spend um, in reference to the materials that he puts together. So uh, I will be tasking him with that. Scott's been in this uh, this line of work for many years. Uh, he was was one of our main operators. Uh, he's done a great job of uh, helping cross train the guys. And um, again, what we have found out is we have a department just about a department full of operators, uh, just given the chance to, to operate. So, and what we will be challenging you guys with, uh, since we have folks that are very capable of operating is, is to beef up our fleet of equipment. Um, you know, just for an example, we could keep two backhoes busy every day. Um, and now that we, we found out that folks can actually, uh, operate those things and not just drive them around. Um, you know, it, it, to me, it makes sense to um, to invest um, in, in our strengths. So uh, Jamie DeGroff was promoted to crew leader. Uh, so Scott uh, will 
task Jamie to look over the crews or assign him a specific crew. Um, Jamie answers to Scott. Scott answers to me. Uh, that's kind of how that uh, how that works. Uh, I did tell the group that um, I would be looking to promote another crew leader as we beef up uh, our fleet. I would like to at least get to about 20 employees uh, there. And um, <clears throat> so if you promote another crew leader, you can kind of uh, have better span of control um, of your of your folks and uh, again, that just gives somebody else something to work work towards. Uh, now, when I say operations manager and crew leader, uh, that does not um, that does not uh, keep them from actually. If they need to operate a piece of equipment, they know that they have to jump on a piece of equipment and operate it if they need to. Um, you know, my my way of th of thinking is the higher up you go the more capabilities you have. And, you know, you, at any time you need to be able to uh, let folks, uh, uh, show folks that, hey, I can do this. And, you know, I'm not asking you to go out there and do something that I can't do myself. So um, both of them has done a great job. Uh, I think the, uh, uh, the promotions are well-deserved. Um, and if you, if we look at within our budget, um, and we've done this within our budget. We have actually moved Scott from hourly to salary. Uh, that will reflect uh, in the budget. But again, it was done within the budget. There's nothing extra. Uh, but uh, we, we just thought that would be a, a great move. Uh, Jenny and I, we discussed that and, and made that happen. So uh, that's what I have to, to uh, promote. I know Susan is uh, <clears throat> working on a program um, to better access our right-of-ways. Uh, we struggle knowing um, uh, right-of-ways on roads because there's so many different. We may have one road that when you go in, it may not have a right-of-way. It may have 15 feet, it may have 30 feet, and it may have 60 at the end. So we're trying to simplify that to where we don't have to uh, spend two or three days trying to find a right-of-way. We can put it on a program well, we can just bring it up and we know exactly what the right of way is. And two, that will help us when we move forward on our mowing crew as well. I'd, I'd just like to say uh, <coughs> thank you to the whole road department and, uh, and to Judge Hale for seems like everything's going great. And I really appreciate the work and extra effort put in. And uh, just got to throw my two cents in uh, about. I've already talked to Scott about this, and I know y'all are probably tired of hearing it, but I still want to push for that uh, spring of the Johnson grass this year. I, I hope we can look into that this winter before it gets time upon us. And uh, I think I've got the support of most of the other masters and uh, at least trying it for one year. Uh, I've asked Scott to look into, uh, you know, what we need to do that. And I, I just want to emphasize again, I'm pushing for that very much to at least try it one year. And if it doesn't work, I'll be satisfied and I'll be glad to admit that I was wrong, but I just want to bring that up one more time. Well, I, I can uh, speak where I'm at on it. Um, it. It's on our list of priorities, but it's not at the top. Um, and, and reason being, we just recertified uh, Jamie uh, DeGroff in holding the chemical card. So um, we didn't think we'd be able to do that. So I guess you can say he's the one that we have um, certified to actually mix and go out and spray. Well, if, if we do that with Jamie, we're taking him away from crew leader uh, on really something that needs to be done. So um, I, I will say I, I'm not – you know, just saying point blank, we're not going to do that, but it is on our list of priorities, but it's just not at the top right now. Um, beefing that fleet up and, and being at, being ready by April to mow those right of ways right now is, uh, is one of the top things that uh, we know we don't have enough personnel. So, but, you know, we're, we're talking about it. We, we really are. Uh, we're just trying to figure out how we're going to do that too. Um, it's not in the budget to do that right now. 
but we we can talk about that when we move forward with the budget. Where are the tractors now? So, um, is Susan on, Scott? Yes. Okay. Uh, Susan's been in, in uh, communications with those. Uh, I'll let her uh, respond to that. Uh, as of Friday, they said that they would be here. They're already in, and we should have them the first week of February. And then, uh, Susan, give them an update on the new truck as well. It should have been here the end of January, but uh, I spoke with the company last week and he said that they had had some sickness and stuff like that. So there was a setback. So as soon as they start, he would call and let me know. But we're probably looking at February right now. Thank you, Susan. Another thing that uh, when we get receive this new equipment, um, the, the guys and, and Susan, they, they've made room to where we can keep these things inside. As, as I've told them, as much money as we spend on this equipment, um, I don't want it to sit outside. Uh, it needs a place uh, where it can be inside. So um, also, uh, if we look at um, currently, I don't know if you guys have, have drove by, but uh, I have tasked Maxie Murray to uh, build us a shed to at least be able to put four of our trucks inside or underneath something, uh, along with the blade, uh, the snow, the snow blade, uh, plus the electrical hookup. Uh, that is a goal that I would like to at least be able to have something to park all those trucks underneath and just to keep them out of the elements of the weather. Uh, so far that that's going really well. Uh, if you guys don't have anything to do, Maxie will need a little help tomorrow setting some trusses. But um, so just come on, come on by and we'll put you to work. But I do appreciate uh, him taking on that, that task as well. Um, so that, that's where we're at with the, uh, the equipment. Uh, is that the way, are you talking about the future equipment or you got some more in mind? Uh, well, we can move on to that, Billy, if you wanna, if you wanna move on to that. Let's move on to that. So um, this is something that we've talked about um, and we've had really good response out of our, our coal mix making. Um, it, it seems like that um, it's holding together very well uh, under what I would call heavy traffic, heavy, heavy and often traffic. So we, we've got it on several roads uh, in the county um, one thing that, uh, I would like to experiment with since we're able to make this cold mix in the winter months, uh, I would like to experiment with running it through a paver just to see how it would work. Um, so we've talked about maybe, um, trying to, and we have found some, uh, pavers. So Tracy, if you'll put, if you'll put up some, some, uh, pictures, uh, we, we have some examples and some prices of small pavers um, that, that we have found. And what we're looking at, if, if it's something that we, we try and we're successful at, um, we're, we're looking at about, I think Scott had said, about three people was, is what it would take to operate one. And... Um, but that's what that's what I'd like to experiment with. The the benefit from this for for us would be we could do this in the winter time, where other big companies are shut down because they can't put it down. Uh, this coal mix, I don't know if you guys have, have seen it, but uh, it works really well. Uh, Tracy, if you'll go on to another picture, and this is kind of the low end uh, of the pavers. <clears throat> I think that's just a side side view of this paper. Here's kind of the the, the high end uh, of the pavers. Uh, I'm not sure unless we unless we can be successful at this. I'm not looking to invest that much money in one. Um, you know, can we get one for 15, maybe 20, maybe? I don't know. We're just we're still looking, but. Um, 
go back to your papers there, Tracy. I hope he didn't fall out in the floor. <laughs> But that's just a thought I had. Um, and then, you know, uh, Scott and I have been talking about it and we've been talking to other folks in the community about this as well. Um, I, I just would like for, you know, if you guys have, you know, something you want to say today about it uh, or want to think about it. Um, but it's like, I think it's something that I'd like to try just so if we have to in the winter time, we could do that. Um, you know, we only pave about five, maybe six miles of road each year with our flex funding, which is not a lot with 600 miles of road. And it takes several years to get it all done. So any thoughts from the committee? Can you keep a paver running with single axle dump trucks? I think how that, that works, uh, basically they just back up there and they dump in it. Uh, and then the paver puts it down. So uh, I guess to answer your question, yes. You can run uh, the cold mix or you could run blacktop through it. Either. Well, we, we want to try the cold mix. We haven't, we haven't tried that. I think it's something that I believe that will work. Um, if you've seen the, the cold mix lay down, um, it, it seems like it, it would run through this. The only way we're going to know is to try it. And um, I thought about maybe getting a, a local company maybe to bring their paver out and just, just see if we could try it. Um, Scott says they make two different kinds, electric and propane with your heaters. Um, again, I, if it works, it would be a huge benefit for our county to be able to uh, put this stuff down in the wintertime. Purchasing a new one, you're looking at what, one or fifty thousand or so, if if it works or. I, I'm not I'm not sure about a a, a new one. Uh, I think they make some out there uh, that have pretty good engines in them, pretty pretty reliable. Uh, in our conversations, basically, if you find some used, uh, the worst case scenario would be uh, hydraulic lines and fittings and things like that. Um, I think electric versus propane, uh, propane, there's not all the, the bells and whistles that you'll have to tear up as often. Um, but right now I'm just, I'm really not thinking new, uh, I, you know, no, not now, but I might say that it works. I just wonder. And then too, we have to have the, uh, workforce to, to make it happen too. Uh, Judge, yep. I, I, I've been looking at these papers <clears throat> at home, and I did find a, a new, brand new paver for $70,000. Now, it's it's a small paver, but I think it would work for what we're wanting to do with it if you want to look at buying, purchasing a, a new paver. Uh, but the others that, that I've looked at, the high end on a uh, it's a modeling uh, one 100 it's uh, around forty two thousand dollars is what they want for that paper but it's got just got 221 hours on it so I'll keep looking and uh, and see what we we can come up with for the best best price when you talk about the size Scott are you talking about what the hopper will hold or the width, or uh, I'm talking about an eight foot paver with a width that'll extend out anywhere from 13 to 15 feet, and the minimum size is six and a half ton hopper. So you can back a single axle dump truck up and dump the whole load in there, and then let the paver go on and do its work. So that I guess that would be nice to be able to do it all in one. Uh, the width, but it wouldn't last long. That six and a half ton, I guess, at 13 foot, would it? I mean, you'd have to have several trucks running to it. But 
Well, yeah, that's that's it's going to eat some material up. Yes, it just depends on how thick or thin you want to go with it. But regardless, it's going to it's going to use some material. <clears throat> I think it's definitely something we need to look into. I think it'd be a great addition to the road department. And a lot of uh, uh, where we want to go with this is a lot of our dead end roads. Um, you know, that's that's what I have on my mind first. And then areas where we replace these big 60 and 72 inch tiles that we have to fill back over, um, you know, to make that look good and to make it look smooth and be safe. So um, just a thought, um, I, of course, I, I say it's a thought. I think we're a little further than just a thought right now because we've talked a lot about it. Um, so I, I will be um, petitioning you all, um, hopefully here pretty soon to, to maybe try to find one of these and purchase one. Um, again, you guys can set how much um, we can, we're allowed to spend on one. Um, what I'd like to do is wait until we pay the bill on the tractors and uh, the cutters to see exactly what's left yeah. in the equipment line item. Equipment line item. And, um, and then we'll go from there. Would a paver service better than another boom mower or not? Uh, no, I think a boom mower would service. This is a lot better than a, than, than a paver. It would because we could we could run two of those also. You ready for the next line, Adam? Sure. Okay. Um, authorize a person order for uh, radio purchases. So what we've done there is uh, obviously when um, uh, we've had OSHA take a look at our operation several years ago, uh, communications was a was a. Uh, a large thing because obviously we try to use any and all safety uh, measures from the uniforms that the, the guys and Susan wears to uh, the equipment that they use. Um, so the thought on this is since we have designated crews that a lot of times the radios in that piece of equipment itself does not work well. And, and then again, they have to stop the piece of equipment to actually reach around and answer the radio. Well, to me, my thoughts are they will now have a radio on their side and a microphone right here, close, close to where they talk and all they have to do is reach up and push the button. And it doesn't, it doesn't hinder them from uh, being unsafe and operating this equipment. Some of them actually have to get out of the piece of equipment uh, sometimes to answer. So I just feel like this is a, a safety uh, purchase, uh, especially our ditching crew, uh, because they are basically right on the road at all times. So if we can keep them inside the piece of equipment and not being out on the road to expose them to the traffic, uh, I think that, that, that will help also. We purchased 15 of those. Uh, so each man or woman will have um, – will have a radio uh, when they're out working. Uh, that way they can communicate with the crew leader or the operations manager. So, uh, and then they can communicate with their, with each other to say, hey, there comes a car or look out, here comes a, comes this, may want to get over. Uh, to me, it's just a, another added safety thing for the, for the, for the workers. Sounds good, I think. And also, um, Susan, if you're still there, give it, give them the figures, and then give them the rebate that we will be um, receiving, and then what we have budgeted uh, in the line item. Okay, just a second. The uh, budget for that amount is thirty five hundred. The radios.
the radios counting mics will be $3,864, and then we will get a rebate of $450, which will bring us back down under our budget amount. So we're with, we were within budget on that line item, especially with the rebate. So, um, but I would ask for a purchase order to go ahead and, and pay for those next court meeting. Where are these radios coming from? We bought them through uh, uh, Marcus Thurman. Uh, Marcus, he takes care of our um, uh, communications and our radios uh, with the county. Um, and does a really good job at it. Um, is it his, is his business name Southern Kentucky communication? Is that correct? Susan? Yeah. Yeah. Southern Kentucky communication. So he, he can work on them then if they need service. Yes. He's just a phone call away. I make that motion for purchase order for the radios. Second. Uh, vote on it. I, I, uh, yeah. Hey, Judge. Yes, ma'am. Um, in order for us to be able to qualify for that rebate, that's why we're asking to pay it this month. Gotcha. Because we have to do it to get the four, $450 rebate. We don't want to miss out on that. That's just like having one of Kenneth's coupons right there. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it looks like that's everything I've got. So um, here's what I want to do. Um, the committee members, I will go ahead and give uh, we, what we did. We purchased a phone for the operations manager. I want to give you that number uh, for you to call. Susan, go ahead with that number. It's 270 834 9761. And you can continue to call my phone if you need to. That's no problem. Um, or that's that's the phone that uh, the operations manager will be will be carrying. Any questions for myself, uh, Scott, Susan, as it relates to the transportation? Going to be rotating like weekends and stuff. Who's going to be the operation manager after hours or by the week? Or well, currently, uh, I think uh, Susan is. I think my name's on the top of the list at uh, dispatch. Is that right, or is it yours? I can't remember. It's yours, then me, okay. then uh, Scott okay. and Jamie. So we've got to put that cell phone number in there as well. Yeah, I mean, the only time is, I think, the way I see it, we're all on call every day, uh, including Saturdays and Sundays, unless we're out of town or on vacation or something. But um, I, I, we haven't talked about a rotation because most generally, if we're, we're being called in, it takes several of us. So it most, uh, it's hard to say just one person can go do it. So, But this is the number we need to call first on a weekend or night. And that's just, that's totally up to you. Again, you can call mine or his either one. Cause if you call mine, I'm gonna call his and vice versa. So it's just an extra number that you guys didn't have that you need. All right. Judge, Everybody got anybody else to Yeah, dude. Judge, have you been approached about the traffic problem on Harry King Road? Yes. And uh, your operations manager has addressed that with the, the owner um, of the business, and hopefully we'll have a solution for that. I talked to Bill the other day myself, and we were talking about graveling, some, uh, taking out a fence and graveling a parking lot south of the present parking lot to alleviate some of the problem. Is that what you worked out with him, Scott? I was I was out there and I talked to Bill also, and he's done took down part of the fence and he's working on taking the rest. 
and uh, he's going to try to get some gravel in there to try to get some of these trucks and trailers off the road. Uh, he's doing what he can to work with us on this, so I is. think it's going to work out for everybody. Billy, that's all I've got. That's all I've got, Billy. All right. I'll make a motion. We adjourn. Second. Thank you.